What's up YouTube? This is Dice Airsoft bringing you guys another gun review today. Are you looking to build a Russian themed loadout but don't want a traditional AK-47 and don't have the sacks of gold required for an LCT or an even more expensive MPO brand rifle? I've got a budget option for you. Today we're taking a look at the AY, sometimes known as Smart Team AS Val AEG. I say AY or Smart Team because if you've seen those two different brands for this particular rifle on the market, they're essentially the same thing. So this will be referring to both of those rifles. The real AS Val is a Soviet designed rifle featuring an integral sound suppressor and was added to the Soviet Army and KGB arsenals in 1987. First off, there's a fair amount of metal parts in this rifle, with the only non-metal ones being the stock pad, the pistol grip, 200 round high capacity magazine, and the handguard. Starting from the rear, the stock folds to the side by pressing down and folding it to the right hand side. However, this is not meant to be fired in this position, both in the airsoft version and the real version, as this is primarily meant to shorten this down for vehicle transport. I say not meant to be fired in this particular position because the stock partially obstructs the charging handle, the fire selector, as well as your trigger. The stock also doesn't stay in place very firmly, as it is very loose and also comes open very easily. However, when it's in the extended position, it has very, very little play. The magazine is ejected by an AK style release, which then feeds into a clear plastic hop up unit. Air is then propelled by a version 3 gearbox and a standard torque motor out of a 6.08 diameter inner barrel. The adjustable rear and front iron sights are in the same type of pattern as you find on a common AK 47 and are adjustable in the same fashion. On the left hand side of the receiver, we also have a scope mount. However, this is not meant for a traditional AK pattern scope mount because the height of the receiver is very different and is a much taller receiver. This is meant more so for some taller Dragonov style mounts or for AS valve specific ones. Standard rail mounts you can find for an AK-47 will not fit on this rifle. Included also in the box of this rifle is a 9.6 volt 1100 milliamp nunchuck stick type battery. And this is one of the few types of options that you have to fit this battery in because it does not go in the receiver. It actually goes in the barrel assembly. One thing important to note when you're installing the battery in this rifle, there's a small allen screw on either side of the barrel closer to the end of the receiver. These are not what you remove in order to install your battery. Loosening these and pulling the barrel forward may damage your wires. Access to your battery is actually on the front of the barrel. Points with the camera here, you actually notice that there are four small holes. You can take a pair of new nose pliers, or in my case, a pair of angled needle nose pliers, insert them in these holes and rotate it counterclockwise in order to loosen. Then once you have that loosened all the way, simply remove the cap and you have access to your battery compartment and the end of your inner barrel. One nice thing too about this is that the inner barrel doesn't go partially in here. You can actually see that the inner barrel goes all the way to the end of this tube. This rifle also comes with standard Tamiya battery connectors. The installation of the battery in this rifle is actually pretty straightforward. Take your two batteries, make sure your wires are out of the way, and insert them below the inner barrel. Once you have them inserted, simply plug it in, tuck your wires out of the way on the top side, and then after that you can simply replace the cap and your battery is installed. Battery options for this barrel are rather limited because of the way that the inner barrel and the end cap are placed. A 7.4 volt candy power lipo is just barely too thick because otherwise, if that's installed in there, it will push on the barrel which will be a hindrance to your accuracy. 11.1 volt cells are also far too large to fit in that tube without pressing on the inner barrel. One type of battery however though that will fit with ease is a 7.4 volt stick type LACO battery. These fit in there very easily. If you get this rifle, I highly recommend that this be the type of battery that you pick up for it. This battery that comes with the rifle is a piece of junk. When you get this rifle, plan on getting a new battery as well as a smart charger because I charge this thing up completely with my smart charger and it wouldn't even turn over one shot in this rifle. I tested it with a multimeter. This doesn't hold a charge at all. Just going to show you guys how this sounds on a 7.4 volt 20C LiPo battery. I recommend that, that be the type that you take. Don't use an 11.1 volt battery in this gun unless you decide to upgrade this and then also add a MOSFET to protect your trigger contacts. First on semi-auto, and this is also completely empty. Then full auto. 
Not too bad for a 7.4 on a stock AEG. Chronographing this rifle earlier on, I found that it shoots right around 390 to 400 feet per second on a .20 gram BB, making this more suited for outdoor skirmishes. This rifle can also be had for right around $230 on multiple Canadian websites such as Toronto Airsoft and Airsoft Depot. Overall, I actually find this to be a fairly solid AEG for the cash. Something like this would actually make a good upgrade platform if you're looking to build a Russian kit and want to build up a rifle to go with that for a relatively low cost compared to buying something like an LCT or an MPO brand AEG. I hope this video helps you guys make an informed purchase decision. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content. As always, this is Dice Airsoft, and I will see you guys next time.